Hi, welcome to our first lecture on uh, pre-calculus. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, transformations of a function. Let's go look at the problem that you are going to see on Alex. Uh, it says translating the graph of a parabola. Just one step. So we have a parabola. We want to move it to either right or left or up or down. Uh, let me explain this thing in, uh, in a software. So let's go here. So if you have a function, or if you have an equation, and you draw it, you might consider moving the picture to the right or left, up or down, or do a variety of other actions to the picture. So let me go ahead and show you. Suppose uh, I have this uh, graph. It's a graph of a function. Say I want to move it up or down. What do we mean by that? So let me just show you. Here, if I move this slider, you see that uh, the two functions separate from each other. And the blue one is the one that is showing you translation to up. If I go the other way, this will be translating the function down. If I bring it back to where it was at zero, so this is <coughs> the original. Well, what if I want to go to right or left? So if I uh, add a number, to my x, I'll see my graph going left. If I subtract a number from my x, I'll see that the graph moves to the right. Again, let me go back to the original. Later on in the course, we are going to look at other things we can do to a graph. We can compress or stretch it in either x or y direction. We can flip it in the x-axis or flip it in the y-axis. And if you're ambitious, you can even rotate the graph. These are all kind of things that we can do to a function. Let's go ahead and concentrate on the simple one. And the simple one is translating to either left or right or up or down. So let's go back to the original problem. That's the problem that you are facing here. So there's a graph of y equal to x squared is shown. This is the graph. Translated to graph of y equal to x squared minus 4. This is one type of translation. And the other one says translated to graph of x minus 3 squared. So you are going to play with your software on LX to get these things happen. Let me go ahead and explain a critical issue here see how we actually approach this thing mathematically. So, first, just to uh, give a brief overview of what we are going to talk about, if you have graph of a function, uh, so you have some function y is equal to f of x. Up there, the example is x squared. Let's fix our mind on how much we want to translate this thing to up or down or left or right. So let's consider a C, uh, some positive number like 2, 3 and so on. And then so C, let's write it a positive number. If I go ahead and look at the graph of f of x minus c, this will be the original graph that has been translated to the right by c unit. So to graph y equal to f of x minus c, what we do is to uh, move graph of y equal to f of x to right 
by C units. So for example, if you want to have graph of say y equal to x squared is given and then you want to graph y is equal to x minus 3 squared. So y equal to x squared is our basis uh, original function, so something like this. And then x minus 3, so of course is our x axis is our y axis, it's the traditional setting. <clears throat> Subtracting a number from x causes the graph to move to the right. Similarly, if we uh, have a function again, start y is equal to x squared, and then we want to compare y is equal to x plus, say, 4 squared. This one, and let me just quickly draw it, so that's our uh, familiar parabola, y equal to x plus 4 squared, so if I add a number to x, it makes the graph go to the left by that amount. So let's go back and write this thing. So if I have graph of uh, x minus c, I'll go to the right. If I have the graph of, so let me squeeze it here, f of x plus c, move the graph of f of x to left by c units. Now it's a little bit uh, perhaps puzzling that we subtract here and then we move in the positive direction. We add here and we move in the negative direction. Sometimes this confuses students. So let me go ahead and try to explain what is uh, under the hood here, what's really happening. It's important to understand uh, the, the event so that we're not just memorizing it. So the best way to do this thing is by drawing a table. So I suppose I want, well, if you are looking at y equal to x squared, well, the table for this you have seen um, hundreds of times just quickly write what this table is going to be so, so some friendly number 0 1 2 3 say minus 1 minus 2 and minus 3 and then your function does something to your x values in this case just squaring them so it's very easy 1 4 9 and then again 1 4 9 on the other side as well and of course you can go all the way to infinity. Let's go ahead, take a look at x minus 3 squared. So what, what's happening there? To understand that, again, we draw a table. Say I have my x. Again, I draw, say, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And if you issue 1, mi minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on. First step, we are subtracting 3 from our x's. So this becomes, if it was 0, by now it's minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0. Just for good measure, let's put some numbers, 5, 6 here. If I subtract the 3 from them, I get these numbers. You can go ahead and fill up these numbers as well. So what does the function do? Function first subtracts a 3 from your x and then it takes that number and squares it. Is that right? So if your mind might go to this, so let me just put the numbers just in case. <clears throat> so it's the last row that gets squared. So 0, when you square it, of course, is 0, 1, and 4, 3 squared, 9, and 1, 4, 9 again, 
And if you wish 16, 25, 36, as much as your patience allows, you can write these numbers. So this keeps going. If you look at uh, these rows, you will see that this row is shifted to the right compared to this row here. Shifted to the right meaning what? Meaning this zero was lining up with zero. No, my zero is lining up with three. This zero happens on top of the three on the x-axis. So everything has been, if you wish, delayed by like three seconds. Whatever was happening before, now it's happening, say, three seconds later. So the graph of uh, this one, the graph of this one, looks like, well, it's a graph that we just draw up there. And for this second, so this was y equal to x squared. And for the second, again, the important thing is that the tip of this, tip of this parabola has shifted to the right by three units. So one, two, three, and the picture has moved here. This is y is equal to x minus three squared. Same way, if you add, uh, say, 4 to your x's, your, uh, th this, uh, this band is going to be shifted to the left by 4 units. So again, when we subtract, we go to the right. When we add, we go to the left, contrary to what you might think. Okay, uh, second issue that we had here is what if I want to take my picture go up and down? So, uh, what if I want to take this graph of the hyperbola, uh, excuse me, parabola, say I want to move it up. The question is, what kind of modification to the formula will be equivalent to taking our picture and shifting it up by four units. And as you see or you read in your uh, uh, web page, if I take x squared and then add four to it, so after I've calculated x squared, after everything is done with the function, if I add a number to it, this is going to be equivalent to translating the graph of the function up by four units so this is translate up by four units so four units <clears throat> what if I want to take the function and uh, lower it suppose I want to take this function so uh, let's draw the graph of this one first so one two three four so imagine like uh, you have a wire in that shape you have taken it in your hand and just lifting it up here this is the graph of x squared plus four what if you want to lower it well it's just as simple suppose you want a graph you want to take this picture and lower it by say three units what should you do to your function to your equation so that it uh, the picture of it is lowered by three units if you have a function y is equal to x squared if you subtract a three from it so that would be your new function Okay, this is straightforward enough as we said it. So let's just recap what we said. Uh, so if I have some function f of x, and then I go ahead and inside the parentheses for x, I replace x by x minus c. Remember, c was a positive number. This meant write by c. c 
unit so x minus 2 means right by 2 units if I look at f of x plus c this is going to be left excuse me uh, left by c units if I write f of x after it's all done plus c this is going to be up by c and if I write y is equal to f of x minus c this is going to be down by c let's write an example suppose c is 3 and y is equal to x squared so this was example would be y is equal to x minus 3 squared this will be y x plus 3 squared this is going to be y is equal to x squared plus 3 and this is going to be y is equal to x squared minus 3 so these are examples of translations of a function now as we said uh, the issue is much more extensive than this and later on when we come to trigonometry you're going to have many more things you want to do to the graph of a function so let me just go ahead and show this thing again uh, so you might want to have that graph and perhaps you want to compress it like this See? it's like I take that and squeeze it toward the y-axis more and more okay let me go back to where I was <clears throat> you want uh, perhaps to squeeze it in the y direction here is how we can do that but if I want to stretch it in the y direction, here is I'm stretching it in the y direction. Perhaps I want to flip my picture. So flip my picture, I go to these negative numbers. So now I've flipped the picture upside down. Let's go back to where we were again. I can take the picture and flip it left to right. Okay, right now I've flipped it left to right. So there are many, many things you can do to the graph of a function. They are all important uh, uh, engineering examples that are going to be coming up later on. You're going to have some signal. That signal has a frequency and has an amplitude when you want to compare various signals to each other uh, their frequencies could be compared that's equal to uh, stretching and shrinking in the x direction their amplitude could be compared that's equal to uh, stretching and shrinking in the y direction and so on so all of these things are in anticipation of what we are going to be doing later on uh, uh, right now we are just looking at the simplest example so again let me go back to the basic <clears throat> if I want to go up here I'm going up now I'm going down let's go back to uh, neutral position I can go to left I can go to the right of course you can combine these two like for example I can go to left and then I can go up very soon you're going to have an example of these double translations coming up <clears throat> now I promised you that uh, we are going to look at this problem two ways one is have a list of a list of things you can do to a function and what kind of movement matches that and here you have to kind of memorize these things one by one of course after you have done it a few times it just becomes second nature pretty soon toward the end of semester you are going to see this list becomes pretty long uh, it's like maybe a dozen items long and at that point perhaps 
uh, memorizing is not the best thing to do but do you want to understand it at a deeper level so that uh, you don't struggle try to memorize uh, remember something and make a mistake on it so a bit higher level example of this thing we have to go ahead and pay attention to a bit of a conflict here what is the conflict so uh, if uh, you understood everything up to here and uh, you're all happy with that that's fine but we are going to go and talk about uh, after this is going to be one level higher up so if you're curious come along so the issue is the following here i am subtracting but i'm going in the positive direction <clears throat> here i am subtracting but I'm going in the negative direction. <clears throat> when you memorize these kind of things down the line, you're going to come into a bit of confusion. Uh, how is this going? Uh, it's like uh, a bit magical. In one place, I am, <clears throat> I am subtracting. It matches to the positive direction. Here, I'm subtracting. It's matching to the uh, negative direction. How is that? The answer to that uh, rather puzzling thing is to understand what is uh, the exact or proper place for this number. When this number is changing the horizontal variable, the x, you notice that you write it next to c, it's in a parentheses. Here, you are moving to the left again this is a modifier it changes your x and they are next to each other this c that's up here that's influencing y it's taking the function up or down so that proper place for it is right next to the y so uh, a more advanced version of this thing is to write it like this if you take x and subtract something from it well it goes to the right uh, by c if you take this function and add a number to it it goes to left by that number now if you want to take this function move it uh, up or down you're influencing the y so proper way of writing this is y minus c is equal to f of x so instead of y i'm writing y minus c and what it does is exactly like we saw here it's going to make it to go up by c and if i write y plus c equal to f of x it's going to be down by c now you see the conflict is gonna here is subtraction is in the causes of movement in the positive direction and same way here subtraction here also causes a movement in the positive direction <clears throat> so this is a bit more advanced view uh, of what's happening a bit of advanced view Uh, it's uh, essentially like looking under the hood of a car you know you can drive a car you press this and that happens you press that one something else happens and so on but sometimes you want to know well what is driving this thing what is really behind uh, all these gadgets in the car and so on you lift the hood and look under and hopefully understand something going on here and here what we did is uh, we lift the hood of this mathematical idea what we try to explain this apparent uh, contradiction here that we had and then we said uh, the way the right way to look at it is to put the modifier so this c is modifying x it's sitting right next to that if you want to look at what happens in the vertical direction the modifier has to be right next to that and now the description of horizontal movement and the vertical movement both of them are the same so that uh, contradiction you might have had in your mind or the confusion you might had there having 
hard time figuring out which way you're going to go. Now you have uh, an understanding of what is causing that. Okay, so that was our uh, nice short uh, lecture for the very first problem. So here you go ahead and take this and play with your software. Try to make sure you understand uh, how the movements correspond to uh, the modifiers that you have. So again, uh, just keep this thing in mind, either this style so it's movement left and right, up and down, this is one way and this is an equivalent way of understanding it if you care to uh, look at this whole thing under the hood. Okay, uh, good luck and God bless until our next mini lecture.